Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the final TPP podcast of uh, the WWE 13 life cycle. Now, if you can direct your attention at your screen, you will see two uh, Ask FM accounts. I just bit my lip when I said that. Uh, there's two Ask FM accounts at the bottom. Uh, the first one is Ask FM, the one DH, that's mine, of course. And then uh, the other one is the podcast. Uh, you can ask your questions to those ones uh, because those are the two I check when we're doing the live stream. And we do do the live Q&A at the end. And uh, so we've got about 60 seconds before we start. Um, so before I bring on our guest tonight and uh, we talk about the randomness and all the stuff about 13 we want to talk about, uh, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being here tonight and uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, and as always, if this is something that you're interested in doing in, in the future, just let me know. Um, pretty easy to contact me on Skype as most that watch this, you know, have me on Skype anyways or have a way to contact me. So it's pretty easy to get on this. You just say, hey, I want to be on the podcast and we'll get you on there. We didn't do one last week because Comcast came out and they were supposed to fix some lines and the guy that came out messed it up and they like killed my service for two days. So I didn't, I would got my service turned on like the night that I was streaming and uh or streaming for um frontline and so I didn't do the podcast and I do apologize for that. Um so we were supposed to have Dark Side Kicker last week, but to rectify that, I've got him this week as well as some other faces. So at this time I'm going to bring the uh <laughs> he lies. <laughs> I'm going to bring the other guys on. Um so uh we've got of course we're going to be joined by uh Admin Animal or or uh, Fifth Animal of Power Wrestling. Uh Afro from Power Wrestling, uh, Barry Stevens, uh, Dark Side Kicker, and uh, Alex McNabb. As some of you may know him, the Monster Fan or Scythe. And uh, so I guess, uh, do we got everybody on here? It looks like we have everybody on here, it looks like. That was, a re that was really nice. Everybody answered instantly. I really, really like that. That makes me very happy. <laughs> and Afro, you may want to kill the background noise, though. Uh, and then, uh, all right. So... Without further ado, or further ado, what the, I, I'm a little nervous right now, guys. I don't know why. It feels like I haven't been talking on a microphone in for, I don't know why. But, um, so <laughs> we're going to do a, uh, a little brief introduction for those that are new. Um, anybody who's watched the podcast before knows Animal and Afro. So, uh, for myself, Animal and Afro, we're not going to do uh, an introduction. Um, but I guess we're going to start it off with, uh, Alex McNabb. So tell everybody a little bit about yourself, how long you've been in leagues and, you know, within the community, so to speak. Um, let's see. Well, I started off in Call Stuff around 2010. Uh, in SmackDown for 2010, yeah. Um, where I started off in NCW, which was run by a guy called Skills. Um, some of you guys might know him, I don't know. But uh, um, from then, that kind of closed down after 2010. So then I kind of did my own thing. In 2011, made PNW, um, brought Solus into PNW because he like quit TXW. Then a bunch of stuff happened. PNW closed down, went into ice for like about a few weeks. Um, didn't I wasn't really getting used much, so I was like, ah, it's mega. I can't be bothered. Away. Um, when I've been in TXW a few times, not debuted. I've been kind of behind the scenes type of stuff um, as well. And now I find myself in TPP, using Scythe and enjoying myself with it. Okay. All right. And then, uh, so this is one I've been waiting for. <clears throat> and uh, he's been saying he's going to 360 no-scope people. And he's just going, trying to go ape shit here in the, uh, in the chat box. But uh, Dark Side Kicker, you're up. <laughs> or complete silence, too. That works. I think he might be fixing his mic. Maybe. DSK. Okay, we'll come back. We'll come back to Dark Side Kicker. We'll come back to Dark Side Kicker. So, uh, Mr. Oh, he's. Hold, oh, he said, hold on. Yeah, where are you at, DSP? All right, so Barry Stevens. You want to tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Catch him up to speed on you? Sure, sure. I'm generally quite new to the spotlight, in, so to speak, but uh, I'd just like to say before I start saying anything that thank you very much for putting me on the podcast. I'm really excited. 
Well, you're welcome. And I guess my journey in Kaw kind of began back in 2011, where PNW and TXW kind of ran most of the show, and of course AOW as well. And I always seem to be the kind of person who would want to be a part of things, no matter what it was. So I tried to dabble in PNW for a while, uh, worked something out, and never really ended up working. And um, then I did a lot of, I guess you could say, independent stuff. I, I was in a league called FCW, which was pretty much, if anyone's been 2011, you know, you know how that uh, community was with all the spammers and the cheaters and stuff. That's where I was. And so that was fun. Um, and then I went, I tried to try to get I made an attempt of going into TXW. I was going to eventually be a commentator, but uh, that also t did not work out too well also. And now I've gotten a fantastic opportunity in PWR and Kapow and True Puro, and I'm so, so excited to be working with everybody. Well, it, it's great to... Uh, I think you got a great commentary voice, to be honest. I... I think it would sound great to be. Uh, I'm just being honest, because I, I have a very boring voice. But <laughs> oh. I, I think that I think I think you'd have a good commentary voice. I just I could see that happening. Oh, I think. And, you. Now I'm wondering, do we got Dark Side Kicker yet, or is he still? Uh... Hi. Oh. Did we hear him? Hello. Yep. Okay. There we go. All right. Give us a give us an intro, DSK. Um, I was John Bishop in uh, ROV. None of you are going to remember that. Um, made it into True Pearl as the Idiota. Idiota became like one of the most fucking known people I have. Just because he's a, a stupid guy. And the super duper guy. Uh, former tag team partner since someone deleted his call. Oh. That's a sad face. I still respect him, and really, he's a cool guy, and that's all I have to say. Arts. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. So I guess what we'll do then, we will jump right into, uh, you know, if you're looking at the stream, you're seeing John Cena kind of run down, and I do apologize if the stream is lagging. I don't know why it would be. Um, I checked my bandwidth before the stream, and it was going at a steady 10 megs per second, but... You know, sometimes Comcast, you know, like I said, they fucked with me last week. They might be fucking with me this week. I don't know. But, um, oh, okay, so it's not lagging. Okay, well, that's good. All right, so first topic. I had topics last week, but I did not save them, and I had shut down my computer and stuff, so I, I, don't, uh, I don't have them this week. So we're just going to kind of go off the, off the cuff here. And, and Steven's actually brought up something very, uh, very, a very good idea. Uh, kind of like a WWE 13 recap because uh, a lot has happened this year. As everybody's aware, uh, there's been uh, numerous leagues that popped up. Um, a lot of people got their their big breaks. You know, they, they got really popular. They got really, really big uh, within the community. So um, I guess we're going to kind of do this in, I'm thinking, three parts. So for the recaps, um, I guess what would be the first the first part of it would be uh, your 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 best um, or your most enjoyable moment that you saw, uh, whether you were involved with it directly or or not directly involved. If it was just something you saw, um, you know, like uh, for me, I'll I'll just give my example. Uh, would have to be like when I saw AC Arthur's when the I I know we're going back to the NGC thing, but when I saw AC Arthur's win the NGC title, I was super proud because you know. I worked with AC a couple of years ago. So um, that was, for me, that was a very cool moment to see that. Um, and anybody want to go next? It was just a cool moment that you've seen within the community. Like I said, it doesn't have to be something you were directly involved in, you know, just something you've seen or maybe even participated in. So. Um. Oh, I did. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so good, man. Uh, you can go first. You can go first. I'll go second. Oh, well, thank you. So, I would have to say that the most impressive feat 
in general that I saw this year was the fact that, and now yeah, we're going back to NGC again, but the fact the fact that that um, simulation players and former sure the matches were scripted, but they were never really as as stylized to a degree as the uh, submission matches that that were seen by people like Eno and Scott Barnett and AC Arthurs and Nick Virtue and Monroe and everybody like that. And I thought the coolest part for me this year was to see both both of those quote unquote universes colliding. And just the just feeling so excited to see how these two would come together into one federation, I think, was probably the most interesting to me. That was pretty. It was pretty cool. It, they had a lot of momentum, and unfortunately, uh, some sad poo-poo things happened. And uh, you know, we, we can't change it, but uh, we can all learn from it. It's all about learning. Indeed. That's right. Indeed. <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> so, uh, so McNabb. Um, right. Um, I'm not too sure if it was this year, but the greatest thing that I've ever seen in Call, like, from my point of view, is, uh, something in TXW. It was a steel cage match between Strider, Everett, and Shannon. Now, that match was played out very well. I know it took them a while to get the ending, and I thought the ending was very bang on, because it was a good ending, and I really enjoyed that match. So... Yeah, it was a very good match to put together. Okay. All right, and then, uh, so let's see. Dark Side, your most favorite moment of uh, 13, or I guess we can broaden the horizon a little bit too if you wanted to, so. Damn. Um, I would have to say making it into ROV. Okay. Just because I literally back then I thought I sucked at um, simulation and now I'm getting better. But thanks to Enigma for you know giving my name out a little bit. Fair enough, and that was a very good answer, and that was a that was a direct thing for him. So you know that's that's good. That's very good. All right, so now we're moving on to power wrestling here. Uh, fifth, do you want to go first? Or do you want Afro to go first? Oh, uh, I'll go first. All right, so. One of your favorite moments uh, throughout this year or, you know, this past uh, the life cycle of 13? Well, once again, any of you who know me, not, I'm not too big when it comes to this game. It's very annoying. That's as nice as I can be. Um, I, would say, I would say more outside the game. Um, it would have to be the growth of the league overall. Because we started, you know, we, we've just got into the core leagues and creating shows in the beginning of this year. And um, through, you know, just through various research as far as like talking to you die hard and taking tips and advice. And then, you know, watching other leagues and, and their shows and just being part of the community. You, you learn a lot and you know what to do, what not to do. And I can say overall it's helped us grow. We have... 36 weeks worth of two shows and pay-per-views and you know we've, we've been able to do things consistently when it comes to stories and management and everything you know and I can proudly say that I'm glad that we've made it this far and I don't you know I, I don't I don't feel like we're going anywhere anytime soon and um when it comes when it comes to the growth as a whole I think it's very important for a league to grow and be able to have those special moments that you can remember regardless of how annoying the game can be and we we've had our moments where we just didn't want to deal with it but you know aside from us there's other people who say that they're, they're, they keep the game and they like playing it just for the simple fact that they're part of the league and the stories and um recently recently in our stories it a lot's been going on as far as like um our stable bwo they, they, they have a story going on where a lot of them are being accused of impregnating a white female and they, they're all about black power and black unity so everybody's looking forward to the pay-per-view to find out the test results this Sunday and it's, it's very interesting to go into that. That's a storyline we've been writing for about two months and you know moving out of, two, out of 13 and into moving out of 13 out of certain storylines is going to be I think it's going to be very it's going to have an impact moving into 2K14 is what I would say. But um, 
yeah, that, that's that's all I got to say. Okay. All right. So, uh, Afro, you're up, good buddy. But uh, so we've got your favorite moment throughout 13 thus far, or uh, you know something you would recall that. Uh, I have to say, um, probably our very first Power Rumble. It's kind of like our Royal Rumble, and uh, uh, it, it takes it takes place uh, on our mid our mid season show, 15 minutes of fame, and uh, it was just it's interesting. We the way we did it because of you know connection and can't have your characters and stuff. We have to simulate it uh, uh, using all computers. So we take 15 uh, people who qualify and put them in. And uh, just watching it, and just watching how it, it was really funny how some of the computers would attack each other, and and it was funny to me and Anna because some of those uh, characters were just rivals. They were rivals in our in our league, and it was just really entertaining to watch. And we just felt like like kids again, just watching a, a Royal Rumble, getting excited when when people got thrown out and surprised at the winner. It was just. You know, something to keep back and watch it and see. And, and knowing that we can build a story from complete, you know, randomness. And there was nothing we predicted, nothing that we manipulated. It was just what it was. It was just cool, you know, progressing with our story after that. Okay. All right. Well, on, on that same token, though, now the other part of this, uh, kind of like our recap, we're going to hit the low point. Uh, we were talking, <laughs> we were talking about the low point right before the podcast. We said uh, about a TPP low point, but that was a couple of years ago. Um, so the low, the low point that you've seen this year, um, or I guess the most severe blow that, in your opinion, was dealt to the community as a whole. So we got to look at this from a very broad spectrum, um, not just you know, from a self perspective. It's got to be from a very broad perspective because. Uh, <laughs> I like, and I'll go first again. But um, I I would have to say, um, one of the lowest points was uh, you know, everything that happened. Um, I, some people like the show. I mean, yeah, congratulations to Aaron Matthews, but NGC Downfall X Ten. You know, that was uh, I think that was a really low point, um, just because of what happened um, at the you know the first seven and a half minutes of the show. It just was not. Train, uh, uh, train wreck in slow motion. Exactly. Uh, it was a train wreck with broken English slow mo. It was, <laughs> it was rough, and uh, it, a lot of things shouldn't have been said the way that they were said. I mean, sure. I mean, Cameron might have okayed that, but um, he should have kind of had a limitation on what he was okaying to say. You know, I mean, regardless, that went up on his channel, so. I guess for me that would be I would consider that one of those low points. I mean, it, it sucks that that happened, but and yes, McNabb, he was. Ugh. All right, so who wants to go next? Fair enough. I will. Why not? <laughs> there you go. Silence the awkwardness. Um, Shut up. <laughs> but uh, let's see. Low point has to be see, has to be said. Uh, something that was in TPP. My my personal opinion was uh, when Sammy was in the power plant, kind of uh, ruling stuff for himself type of thing. Die Hard knows the whole story. Like he's the one that, to explain it better. But uh, like. Sammy was basically, you know, trying to make sure that he was the man in TPP and all that jazz. Um, so I, heard if you I wanna... really wish, yeah. I really wish I had a like a voiceover thing. Actually, well, like I wish I had something that said like Ashton Kutcher saying "burn" because that, like, you really could have just really ripped into him, which he didn't. Which you guys are lucky because, like, for those of you that don't know, um, McNabb. Uh, he doesn't. He didn't. He doesn't only control Sight. He he controlled Titan uh, last year, and and in the other leagues that he was in, he was Titan, and he was in the Rumble, which Monroe was in the Rumble too. And Monroe's got a legit, you know, beef about what happened, and and we've talked about it. We talked about it in the party the other day, but um, but yeah. So it was a legit issue 
like a legit issue with Semeraro guys, and people don't realize that. But and, and McNabb is being too nice about it because he should have just called him a prick. I I I would I would have okayed that. I really would have. Uh, I'm but, trying um, not to swear on the podcast. You know, I'm trying to keep the TVP. Uh, you know, keep it rated that, G, guys. Come on. Yes. Ah, we we ain't we ain't PG on here. I already I think I already said shit once. Oh, there it goes again. Fuck. Oops. Okay, exactly. I, I will go and say the <laughs> motherfucking prick that uh, screw job me and, well, was a very, very, very selfish motherfucker. <laughs> Let it all out. Oh, here we go, here we go. Everybody be quiet. Here we go. I just wanted, I just wanted a burn in there. I've never actually put in a burn, and I just, I wanted to do it so bad. I, I should have, I was, I didn't know that he was gonna say that. Like I said, if I would have known our topics, and if I would have known he was gonna bring that up, I would have had one ready. I really would have. But, um, but yeah. So for those of you that don't know Samurai, as far as I know, he doesn't even play the games anymore. Or... Oh, he does. Um, I, I kind of wandered across with him when I was on Xbox Live, just playing a couple of player matches. He kind of hopped in one of my tag team matches and hopped back out. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember, everybody, he said at one time to half of the TPP guys in a party, he was better than everybody, and I think he meant it. Oh, my. I don't, I'm not 100% sure when he, I'm not 100% sure on the meaning. Like, I don't know if he 100% meant it, but he meant it to a point where it kind of ex expanded beyond just TPP because it was kind of, it, there was a little bit more direction with who he said he was better than, but um, that's not my place to go into that, so I'm, I'm not trying to. Samuraro 22 is his gamer tag, or that was his gamer tag. I think he blocked still me. So I don't know. I don't it know. Still that's, is. Okay, okay. So that's still his gamer tag. He he blocked me, but um, but yeah. So I've I've tried I've tried to you know come in contact with him again, but I don't really got you know much to really say to him. I mean, he was he had a good mind, but it was very um a lot of tunnel vision and I've covered that on other podcasts and I don't, I don't want to bring the tone down to this podcast to make it all depressing or anything. So we're going to, we're going to move on from Samararo because he was just, uh, he was a, he was a mama drama issue guy, although he doesn't have a mama or baby mama or whatever. I don't know. He, 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 he is a hashtag battle over. Okay. We're going we're gonna to move on. So DSK low point in WWE 13 for you, um, from your perspective. Low point. Um, I would have to say maybe ROV closing, just because they only done like two shows when he came back, which was like the reunion, and then you got the main show back, and then that was it. Okay. When it was like the biggest pump thing they were trying to do, like bringing it back, which I was excited just to see. And I I don't even care if I was part of it, just to see the shows. But it was kind of sad that I had to go back down and wasn't even that long of a blast. I feel ya. I feel ya. I was kind of looking forward to it a little bit. I mean, I, I kind of heard about it a little late. Like, I didn't have, you know, as much time with it. But, um, yeah, I was kind of looking I was looking forward to it. And, uh, unfortunately, you know, just kind of the way it happened. But uh, is that all you wanted to say or did you want to add anything else to that or – can I say the NGC and FAM combined? Sure. <laughs> Remember that episode? Yeah, yeah. It was that, uh, Downfall. That had to be one of the worst episodes ever. Well, I, I wouldn't say it was the worst. Like, after the, uh, you know, after after that seven and a half minute mark, after, you know, uh, BH got off of, uh, um, Got off the microphone, you know. Uh, the matches were good. Like the mat. Like I will legit say this, guys. The matches were good. Some of the commentary was unbiased, but a lot of it was very um, biased, and you know, it was kind of meant to be like a slander fest verbally. So I don't know. I mean, the, I don't want to take take away from the people that were you know actually competing because they were doing good. But I don't know. I just I think the commentary killed that show, and then you know, BH's promo was just. He just tried to shit on everybody, and it just it wasn't it wasn't cool at all. So, also the only worst part about that episode was what was it? Travis's Jones's ever first win. Yeah, that's a great way to fucking end the show. 
You know, I really, I actually like Travis Jones. Believe it or not, I like the guy. I like him. Oh, I like and, him too. Uh, I just think it was like very sad that he had to go for like a losing streak. Then when it dies, then he gets to win. Exactly, and I, I don't think that was, you know, exactly fair to him. I mean, I mean, yeah, it's great to go out on a win, you know, but not like. You know, not in the sense of you have to get a losing streak, and then when the show's gonna like on the final show, then you get, you know, then you get your deal, you know, then you get your win, then you get that nice W in the in the column there, and then uh, did you want to add anything else, or are you good? Or? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. All right. So, fifth animal. Yeah. What is, in your opinion, one of the lowest points of WWE 13? Uh, league wise, uh, league or league or I guess I don't want to say league wise. I'll say we'll say it like this. Um, you can say it about any superstar, or any, or I don't want to say super anybody that has wrestled that you know, um, whether it was somebody you had a problem with or they had a problem with you, whatever. At the lowest point, um, in in your perspective, opinion, or yeah. All right. Um, do I have permission to remove my filter? Yes. Um. But, <laughs> but try to keep it to 120 seconds. All right. Um, lowest point has to be all these stupid ass kids, and that goes to all ages because a lot of you grown men act like stupid ass kids. And I'm speaking from a personal standpoint of view, and I actually mean this. You guys act like shitty children. And the drama I see, and I'm not even involved, or where I, I, I have not been involved within the whole history of core back on SVR. I've played the games and I've had friends, you know, everybody have their crew and they do things, but you know, being new to creating shows and everything, I all I do is watch and I absorb information. And you guys have to understand that you have you have to set an example for these leagues. And that's probably one of the reasons why a lot of these leagues die, because they're breaking off of bullshit and they're feeding off of bullshit. You guys are creating bullshit leagues and bullshit communities, which is making all the newer guys feed off of bullshit. Thus, you're not getting the best of your ability on any kind of league, you know, and I'm being serious about that. It's a low point for the community as a whole. And I keep seeing these videos about leagues dying, about people raging after one another, causing drama, he say, she say, all types of bullshit because it's complete bullshit. You guys are grown men. You don't need to be pretending to be in high school. You're done with that. Whether you got your GED and dropped out or whether you finished high school, it's complete bullshit to cause drama within a video game. If people want to play the game and have fun, then have fun. If people want to create a league because they want to get visions out there, they want to create a show, they want to do entertainment, everybody have their own reasons to do good things. It's never a reason to be a bullshitter, asshole, whatever you want to call it. But that that's the lowest point. For all these grown men to sl stoop down to a kid's level and just cry about not getting what they want. And, and I, I mean that from any kind of age. It's complete bullshit that people like Die Hard, that I have to physically see him go through crap dealing with he say, she say, all types of drama. And I'm not even involved in that kind of community. I see things and I'm, I'm getting heat, you know, once in a while throughout the days I get heat and I got to sit here and deal with different things because people hate on me too, but it's all the stupid stuff. It's people acting stupid. Y'all need to cut it out, period. Anyone who's listening, y'all need to cut it out because it's a low point for all of us who's just trying to do what's best for our community, which is increase it, you know make things better, help people see the other side of wrestling and entertainment and not that shit that you keep seeing on TV and worshiping. Understand what we're trying to do and stop acting like children. Amen. Exactly. And, and I counted, I don't know, I, I, lost, I lost count at 14. 14 <laughs> curses within roughly four minutes. That is, that, that is awesome. I'm wiping, that, that's a good one. I'm wiping away tears right now. Intensity indeed. Oh, to see, you guys are lucky because Barry Stevens is going to go last. So, Afro, you're up next. Your opinion, low point. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> no. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to keep this brief. Thank God Animal went first. Uh, well, a a Animal knows how, how I am about 
uh, I, I like to create. I like to help people with their attires. I like I like to 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 make a person's gimmick visual uh, visible. And I like helping people. I don't mind, you know, going out of my way to help someone with their gimmick. What what upsets me is when you come to me, and I'm a very busy person. Animal, we're both very busy people because there's only two of us working on this stuff weekly. And, and when I go out of my way to help you to make four attires, new attires for your character, and I don't necessarily look for a thank you. I just want to help you because it betters our whole league as a, as a whole. But but when you come to me and ask me verbally, ask me, Afro, can you help me with my character? Sure, why not? What? Give me what you have in mind. I'll work on it. Now you let me do this, waste my time, and then come around and say, "Ah, I want to start a new character." <sighs> please, please don't waste our time, and, and don't get upset if, if if I don't work with anything else after that, because I I, I can't have flip flopping. I can't have people flipping their gimmicks over and over. That's a pet peeve of mine. If you have an idea, shoot at me with it. If you're just gonna be bouncing around and being indecisive, you know, don't waste the time. I don't have it to That's give. Right. All right. Do you want to add anything else, or are we ready to move on to Barry Stevens? I'll ask something real quick. I I, I typed it in the chat, but I, I I want people to hear it. You know, I, I want them to understand. That it takes a lot to actually do this kind of stuff. It, it takes a lot. The the writing, the editing, the designing, the recording, everything takes a lot. And when it's all on one person or two people, when, when you don't have a large team, you know, this is this is not the company that you watch on TV. We don't have thousands or hundreds of people working on one show. You have a little bit of people taking the time out of their lives to do this stuff. So to take advantage of us, it's a don't be an asshole about it. You know, if, if be honest, be open, because we're open about it. You know, anytime you want to do something with your character in any kind of league, try to approach the owner or manager, anybody you have to answer to, try and approach them with respect and, and try and be kind. Don't be a selfish asshole about it and don't be very egotistical because the, the fact of the matter is your shit does stink and you're not all that. Understand that people you have to always build yourself and promote yourself to be the best and you have to work with others in order to be the best You're not going to get anywhere by yourself by sitting there thinking I'm going to walk in here and, and think I'm the best and everybody will see what I see That's not how it works anyway. It doesn't work anyway. You're not going to get a job interview based off of your own No, it doesn't work like that these days. Nothing nothing works by yourself. You have to talk to people you have to show who you are People have to engage, be able to communicate with you and relate to you on different kinds of levels. Understand that, people. Understand that. We got we got Brother Animal in here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. Amen. No <laughs> Preach, brother. All right, Barry Stevens. Now, in your professional opinion, good sir. Yes. What What do you think was one of the lowest points of WWE 13? Uh, the lowest point... I would say for me, specifically, not not that I want to be egotistical or anything. I just don't really have much to say for anything else that's sorry haven't already been said. But um, so I'd have to say the lowest point uh, specifically was in in a specific league that I I myself and Dark Side Kicker was in. There was some controversial situation that arose between myself and him in a World's Heavyweight Championship ladder match. And the last thing that I wanted to do was cause any semblance of controversy or anything like that, because I don't I hate to be the kind of person that leaves a legacy saying that I'm the person that starts any shit. Because that's just not a good moniker. That's a huge red stain, you know? I mean, it's just, it, it's nothing that people want to have, pretty much. But the fact of the matter is, I said something that I sincerely should not have done, and I will, and it haunts me to this very day. And 
I sincerely, sincerely apologize, Darkseid, for what I said and how, how all this ridiculousness got started. But luckily, it is all water under the bridge now, but that was certainly the lowest point for me. Okay. All right. And uh, for those of you that don't know, I, I know what it was about. I, I knew about, I heard about it to the grapevine. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, that's, that, that is actually a really low point. That's a good one. I can't I can't top that. So yeah, that, that was a pretty low point and that that's a again that was a personal low point for him. So that that speaks volumes when somebody can self-reflect like that and still be able to like you said water under the bridge. You know, at least you guys aren't, you know, trying to rip each other's heads off right now, which is good. And Dark Side's my bestest buddy. That's right. See, the bestest of buddies. He's my brother from another mother. Team hug it out for life. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Best tag name ever. Okay. So, now it's 8.34 right now. So, I don't want to do a two-hour podcast tonight for the simple fact that I'm tired today. We're so, at this point, uh, we're going to go back to some WWE stuff. But, for those of you that have the benefit of the Ask FM webology, <laughs> yes, I said webology, we're going to bust out some of the Ask FM questions. Just because I've been itching to respond to some of these that I've been getting today, and I'm only going to respond to just a few of them. And uh, so first, I'm going to answer one that I got last week, but I forgot to answer it. Um, what advice would you have for somebody who is trying to make it in CAW, in the CAW world, but can't find anywhere that is looking? Uh, if this person is on the podcast, you, you asked anonymously, so I don't, I can't really direct you to anybody specific. Uh, I have no idea who you are. So, um, if you are trying to make it in CAW, uh, Animal pretty much said it. Um, you know, you got to connect with people. That's what it's all about. You got to connect. You got to. P- the thing is, people don't necessarily extend their hand out to you. you. You have to take the first step. When you take the first step, if they return the favor by stepping towards you, then sure, that's great. If not, you know, move on to the next one. You, you can't get too. Um, what's. Uh, too sidetracked with just you know one place you gotta if, especially if you're just trying to get started you know you gotta try to really branch out and see tread the waters get a feel for things and you know interact with as many people as you can and always try to be respectful of others but don't 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 just job to people because you shouldn't have to do that either you know you should you know you, you shouldn't have to stick your head so far up the rear end that uh you know you're seeing out their eyes you should still be able to have a voice, but um, you know, just be respectful of one another. And if you go in with a positive attitude, you know, and knowing your place, you know, knowing the the totem pole, the pecking order, you should be okay. Um, you know, so I, if you're on the podcast right now, I hope that helped you. That's really the best I can give you in that sense. I mean, did you guys want to add anything to that or? Uh, Nothing. What is it? Um, I know there's a guy in the. The stream chat, who's been been calling this, I know there's two of them. Uh, they're being called uh, wannabes. Oh, I'm going to say I'm going to say what their <laughs> wannabes are, but I'm not going to say their name. One is uh, fuck, who's that one guy from TXW Omega something? Omega, Omega Ali. Yeah. Okay, there's one guy being called that, and then there's the other guy being called um the Monroe wannabe. <laughs> now, I have to say these to them that they're cool people. Um, and this is a good example. If you get called wannabe, don't take it serious. It's just like these two guys. Because literally, they don't give a fuck about who they're being called as. They're still going the way they are. And um, that's mostly it. They're just going the way they are. They don't care about what people are calling them. And so that's a good way to be. You know, I Do what you got to do you know, and, and be you. You know, if you so happen to look, <clears throat> you know, um, remarkably resembling of Monroe or, like, the big show or, like, Randy Orton. Bad example with Randy Orton. Do not look like Randy Orton, please. <laughs> um, or John Cena. Or Daniel Bryan. Or CM Punk. Look like... Uh, Bart Sickler. Exactly. Look, look like Brian <laughs> Kendrick. How about that? Look like Brian Kendrick. But, uh, you know, be you. Be unique. You know, uh, that's the most important thing. Being unique is the one thing that stands out. But being unique does not mean you go in with, 
like uh, a 20 pound chip on your shoulder you know that that's not being unique that's just being a prick <laughs> so um, I guess with that I'm going to kind of jump into some of my personal Ask FM questions here I got uh, a few of them I, I wanted to direct this one um, I don't know if this person's on the podcast I hope you are because I'm assuming you're the one that spammed all these random questions in here like the anonymous ones which I love the Ann in the question the Ann on questions i know i can disable them but you are the spice of my life and you give me something to type when in when nobody's awake um stop kissing ass you suck at doing your show and you suck at wwe games period well you who suck i i suck oh man uh, he, he he used pr he used proper grammar you use proper grammar so i do i Is thank it? you for that thank you he used <laughs> proper grammar he he exclamated ass because i'm an ass. Oh. You can ask anybody. I'm 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 a, I'm a mean guy. I am mean mean guy. I'm a mean man. Are you so mean? Um, I I do suck at doing my show. I do because you know I I don't I don't have a whole lot of video packages and stuff. But I can tell you this: in WWE 2K14, we have some new stuff planned for you guys for everybody that watches the show. So Good you know, hopefully you guys like it. And, and apparently, you watch the show if I suck that bad at doing my show. So <laughs> true, dude. So hopefully, hopefully you enjoy it. Um, I do suck at WWE games. I used to be a really good competitive player, but um, McNabb can attest to this. I am not good at it anymore. I just, I can't do it. We tried to have a competitive match, and I just, I couldn't do it. I tried with Kane. I tried with, uh, with Die Hard. I tried, I don't remember, who else, who was the other one? Um, you did Kane, uh, Die Hard, who else? Um... Uh, was it Cena? Tri Triple H. Triple oh, H. Oh yeah, Triple H. Yeah, I tried Triple with Triple H. H, and I couldn't do it, guys. I tried my best. I just, I, c I can't do it. Oh man. Um, <laughs> I just, so I don't have it anymore. McNabb three. Oh, when a game has a one button reversal and everything is arcade like, it's pretty hard to be I just, competitive. I don't know. It, it was like that was the thing. I just, I couldn't do it. I just, I tried. Like I was doing good at certain parts, but then, then it just kind of like you just try to do the flow thing. And, and McNabb was doing the same thing. Like he kept getting into like these flow spots, and we weren't reversing them because they were spots that should happen in a match. So it was just kind of I don't know. If somebody wanted to fight me in a competitive match, I don't think I'd be able to do it. You'd probably beat me. Yes, you will beat me. I'm not an unbeatable person. I've never been. You know, I've been beat. I've been beaten many times. Um, and then turning into the, from that question into a good question, I wanted to answer this one. Um, since 14 is coming out next week, uh, who was your all-time favorite COD during WWE 13 in any league, Fed, or wherever? There and we this go. Is for every, and this is for everyone on the podcast. If That would be great. Okay, so I'm assuming he wants all of us to answer this. Ooh. So, um, <laughs> well, 14 is coming out on Tuesday. So the next time you guys see the podcast, it won't be 13 gameplay. It'll be... Uh, computer Iron Man match on 14. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my all-time favorite. Who is my all-time favorite? I mean, everybody wants to say, like, you know, like all these people. Um, but I would say my all-time favorite was, uh, I don't know, I'll, you, I'll let you guys go first. I'll come back to mine because i got to think of who it was because I'm kind of in a toss-up right now. So. <laughs> all right. You want to go first, McNabb? Yeah. Or? <laughs> <laughs> Um, All right, I'll go first. I'll go first. <laughs> okay, Barry, you can go first. Too. All right, so my all-time favorite would definitely have to be Sylvester Reno, no doubt. And I know, I know, he doesn't really have too many videos on YouTube in terms of matches and things like that, but the amount of quality. That this man has for his for Sylvester Reno, the character, and then the few other characters he have, just the amount of quality that this man can produce in paint tools and in his characters in general is just staggering. And I've always been so excited to to see the things that he can do in matches too, because he's got the he's got the creative aspect and he's got the wrestling. It, it's just I don't know. I'm I'm geeking out. I gotta stop. But that's my favorite. Okay. And that is a, that's actually a really good choice, you know. I, I he was, I, I he was featured on the power plant like back in 2011, like for one match. But uh, yeah, that's a really good choice. So that's a great big shout out right there. All right, so McNabb, your personal uh, favorite. Well, better me, be I, Die Hard. <laughs> you wish. 
But uh, <laughs> my 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 uh, personal favorite is people that you know. Me, I'm going to base this off of people that I've worked you know well with in matches and everything like that. And I think everyone's going to already know who I'm about to say. It'll be uh, Nick, aka. Uh, Mr. McKay, you know, I've enjoyed doing my feud with him and all that stuff, and, you know, I, I found his simming style very good. I, I found it hard that he was denied from P, PWR, but, you know, he's my, you know, favorite person so far on this, because, you know, me and him, we're great friends, and, you know, we put on a hell of a show, how everyone loves the network collision, so, you know, he's right now my personal favorite. Okay. All right, Afro, your favorite, your favorite of thirteen. Oh man, uh, I don't know. I, I I haven't really gotten my feet out into the ocean of the car community, but uh, from what I've seen, I actually have three favorites. Uh, one, uh, well, two. One, one I've worked with, and one, and one I've been watching. Uh, this character named Twisted Mike. <laughs> It, 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 you you think oh it's been done before you know guy trying to be a woman um, blah 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 but the way is the way he did it right the dude name is Brocky Balboa the way the way he set it up the character it's just this big giant blonde dude with long hair who just insists that he's a woman and the face pain and the the the, the red lipstick and the the whole it's not even like I wouldn't even call it like a gold dust kind of gimmick it just it took on a, a personality on its own. And I've personally been doing a lot of that tires for that character. And it's just, it's crazy. Just the different angles and storylines you can go with them. And that's just a personal favorite of mine. And as for just what I've been watching out in, in the other leagues, you know, it seems like a cop out, but I have to say Monroe. Just the way, just Monroe's just been out there for a while. And just, I like the, 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 the entrance and the, and the the music and the the way it's he's put together it's just really good. It's all about that action, son. Word, word, <laughs> word. <laughs> all right, so fifth animal. Yes. Your favorite. My favorite would have to be 13. a character in power wrestling. I talked about him last week, and no, not last week, but last podcast. In the podcast before that, and probably the podcast before that, Black Falcon, you know, leader of BWO Black World Order. I just, I, I can't, I can't stop his promo, the the promo skills, the mic skills, the way the character is just portrayed. It's just, it's it's hilarious and it's entertaining. He's the only character. I think it was yeah, it was the last Terror Dome episode thirty six. He had a segment where he took a lie detector test and literally basically spoke for about 10 minutes long, I think. And he's like the only character that I've actually watched. And I know a few other people watching will sit there and listen to the whole promo for the amount of time that it's on. It's just so entertaining listening to how someone can change every little thing and turn it to about being about black power, black this, black that, you know, and, and the promo and, and the words are o- always used so clever in a way to make it entertaining, fun, and not offensive. So I like the character. As far as ring ring skills go, I control Black Falcon. I play as Black Falcon. Just being in the community and knowing how people play, knowing how to do matches, his matches are always entertaining, not only because I know how to put on a sim match, but at the same time, I know how to storyline things. That's my strong point. I'm a writer. I like to write. So his matches always turn out to be entertaining in a comical way. There's never a moment where you're not going to be entertained by watching Black Falcon. But that is if people take the opportunity and, and watch him through power wrestling. He's a very interesting, comical um, I don't know. There's there's a long list of words I could, I could talk about him, but that's my favorite of all time. And I just also want to add that that character was solely made to be a jobber for comedy, and it turned out to be something bigger than what we all expected in the league. And it's growing to the point where you know people are actually getting more about the gimmick and, and they're taking it and applying it to real life, which is basically what I, I did. I when I create characters, I create gimmicks based off of certain things, certain situations in life, 
um, things that occur in society, mockeries, any anything. So I, I do things like that, and only certain people will understand it and then it takes the shows to understand what what is actually being portrayed for people to catch on to it all right so <clears throat> now to the one opinion that really matters oh, oh i mean oh, oh no your guys's opinion mattered oh no, just kidding <laughs> but uh oh, i've been wrestling with this one for like the entire length of what we've been doing this um my personal favorite I, I'm going to say this because he's a TPP guy and because I love him to death and because he's been with me through so much crap. You know, he's been with me for a long time. But Craig Hazard, he is my personal favorite. Although he is late as hell for his matches, he is late as hell with his voiceovers. <laughs> he is so late when he does stuff. But when he when he's there, as, you can ask you can ask McNabb, you can ask uh, uh, Awesome Fish or uh, Mackay. You can ask anybody that's in TPP. When he's there, it's just it's fun. He's just one of the coolest guys ever, and uh, I've got nothing but love for him. I know he's not on the podcast because he works like 12 hours a day, like six and a half days a week. So, you know, he's always working, and then when he's not working, he tries to get on his Xbox. So uh, much love. He's my he's my all-time favorite is Craig Hazard. When he's came in, and he's always had the same little kind of extremist gimmick, and now he's kind of making this transformation into like this wrestling gimmick type deal, and I like that. Um, but I've always loved Craig Hazard. I always love the stuff he does. And, uh, yeah, Hazard is, he is the Cena of TPP. He is, he is our, C- he's my personal Cena. Or, C- he's my CM Cena. That's what he is. He's my CM Cena. <laughs> and uh, I, I love Hazard. And if you don't love Hazard, there's something wrong with you because he's such a cool dude. I mean, he's so easy to work with. And if you don't know him, you, all you got to do is ask anybody in TPP for his gamer tag, and he'd be more than happy to bang with you. And, uh so, with that being said, I don't want to get too much on a tangent there. Um, I'm going to kind of jump around on a couple of these questions because some of them aren't good, and then I see two that are pretty good. Um, I hate you for being you. Okay. <laughs> you anonymously hate me for being me. I Well, I hate me for being me too sometimes because when I get up in the morning, my voice does not sound this great. Sometimes it sounds like this, and I'm like, oh, my God. So you ever wondered how I did the Jerry Graham voice? It's exactly like this, brother. Exactly when I wake up in the morning. <laughs> That's Jerry Graham right there. Best Jerry Graham impersonation ever. Um, and then for the person who said that they banged Melinda, well, unfortunately, that's a that's kind of a tough one. So I guess congrats. I mean, mm-hmm. you must be oh. like a ghost. You're like a ghost when you do it. So she, you were so fast you didn't feel it. <laughs> and I didn't notice it, so... Low. I don't know. So what does that bad. say about you? What does that say about you, good sir? See, people want to try to troll on Ask FM, but I can troll right back. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Here's a good one. Give us a sample of what is coming in TPP for 2014. Um, I cannot give you a visual sample, but I could possibly give you uh, an audio sample uh, based on uh, seeing as though I do have a possible commentary partner in here with me right now. Um, some of you may know him uh, from the live wire presentation when we do it live, um, but uh, it might be something like, "Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to TPP Frontline. This is your host, Christopher Billings, alongside Alex McNabb, and you know something like that." So possibly, maybe there's a little sample for you, a little teaser. Maybe, maybe can't guarantee that. Yeah. Um, and then this one, I like this one. Stop sucking up to the community. We don't like you, and we never will. Period, and that was a, like he put the period inside the bracket to like emphasize the end of it. So I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not trying to suck up to the community. I'm just trying to give an open forum for people to speak. So next question. Good game. No re. Can I join TPP? Um, well, you asked anonymously. So like I said earlier about the young man or <laughs> girl that was, you know, trying to break into leagues and feds. I would strongly recommend you contact people. But unfortunately, I will tell you the same thing I will tell everybody else right now. You can put an application in on the site, but right now we're not doing anything for bringing new applicants in. Uh, We will have a video regarding that after 14 comes out. Uh, Would you rehire somebody who quit TPP recently if they have changed their ways? Nope, because I know that's George Phillips. All right. (laughs) So now these these are directed questions here. To Barry, who do you consider your greatest adversary in the ring? 
greatest adversary. Greatest adversary. Oh, well, considering that uh, I, Barry Stevens, haven't had a very long tenure in the color community right now, I would have to say that I was extremely blessed to be in a back-and-forth promo with a certain man named Cinevis, whom we went back and forth with in uh, a true puro chat and had one hell of a promo. So I would sug- I would say at this point, if anybody, it's probably him. Okay. All right. Now, the second part of this is to Dark Side Kicker. Hey. What is what is the inspiration behind the car, the idiota? <laughs> oh man, this is quick. Um, um, uh, I was looking one day for mask designs because I want to make a mask character, and. The most thing I kept finding was Deadpool mask, so I was like, fuck this, I'm making a Deadpool mask. Okay. And then that was and when I made the Deadpool mask, I was like, okay, Deadpool and Marvel is like he's literally like one of the most funniest and idiot guys on there. So I was like, Yeah, I'll just make this guy an idiot, It'll make more sense. So that's why if you ever seen his matches, he uh dances, does like stupid shit. That's just how he should be played and Deadpool was literally still my only inspiration. Okay. All right. And then, uh, so this one's going to be a question for everybody. Um, if you don't know him, you can say pass. Um, or if you haven't played him, you can say pass. I have personally played him. So what do you think about Josh Phoenix? Be brutally honest. Wow. I I love you. I I had a blast in our match. It was fun. I, I like your, I like your character. I, I like his move set. I think you're going to do really good within the community as long as you don't let the trolls get to you, which I know they almost got to you earlier. Just don't let them get to you, and you'll do fine. I would have to say Dios is pretty good. Um, also, for anyone who's literally still watching this, 2K14, Josh Phoenix and Idiota is a tag team. Get ready. Very nice. Anybody else want to add anything about uh, Mr. Jazz Phoenix? Yeah, uh-huh. yes. Oh, dope, dope, yeah, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Never had the pleasure. Yeah, I haven't had really the pleasure like, playing like, like, like. against him. But I, I've heard about him. I've heard a great deal about him. I would like to uh, have some sort of experience with Josh Phoenix. But um, as usual, you know, just trying to get around and hear different things, see what's going on with this person, that person. I'm pretty sure eventually I'll get around to, you know, having encounters with different people. Okay. I think so far, from what I've heard, he's he's pretty cool. He is a pretty cool cat. All right, so now Mr. Stevens. Okay. What you got? So, <laughs> so I would have to say that Joshua Phoenix has a ton, a ton of awesome skill in the ring, and he really has been honing his craft very, very well. And he's been he's been trained very well also in the Robbie Scott stream and Strider and such. And uh, I have gone against him before. He's he's a real dictator in the ring, and I say that with the most, with the best of. Uh, <clears throat> with the best of compliments to him, because he really knows how to dictate a match and how to make it look the best that it possibly can be. And I have to condone that about him. And uh, I think we have yet to have a five-star, but I'd say we had, I've had a pretty good one with him. Okay. All right. Anybody else want to add anything real quick before I move on to the next question? Oh, yeah. I never answered that question about my favorite oh. person to face. Yeah. Uh, it's a really tie. I only have to say this because it's really true. It has to be between Barry Stevens. Oh, geez. <laughs> or, or Cinevis. Only reason is because, uh, Cinevis plays his character very good in the ring. Because he has that, in my mind, I see the brawl style in him, which he actually does pretty good. And then when it comes to Barry, he plays, he plays a fucking douchebag well. <laughs> it is it's literally fun to face up many times with any of my characters nice <laughs> very nice oh sure a, you're making me blush that's right you're making him blush all right so this is kind of this is to everyone uh which new car wrestler so 
We got it. I'm assuming that this is going to be. Um, this is from Cinevis, so. Oh, we just put you on the spot. I usually let you guys stay anonymous, but I accidentally said it out loud. Whoops. Uh, which car wrestler or new car wrestler impressed you the most this year? Uh, what made them stand out the most from everyone else? I will go first, just so you guys can forget my answer and then hear everybody else's. And we'll have Barry answer last. That's why you guys only remember his. So. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> All right, so I guess for me, I would say, as conceited as it's going to sound, James Mackay. He has been like he hasn't been with the power plant that long, and and like um, McNabb was saying earlier, he doesn't know how he got denied from PWR, and it was like the roster cap thing, but um, I'm so glad, and I'm so lucky that he came to TPP, because uh, he's literally like our hottest prospect, and. For some odd reason, something, and we always joke about this when we're in the parties and we talk about, you know, how we came into TPP, but I looked at his application once and I passed it over. I wasn't even going to look again. And something said, look again. And I looked again and we were trying to do this tryout match. And that same day, I shit you not, my wife totaled my car, T-boned an old lady, T-boned an old lady like two minutes before his tryout match. And I was like, hey, I got to go take care of this business. So we we got back. We did a tryout match. Everybody loved him. Um, but I would say uh, he stood out the most to me for the simple fact that his character could be worked as a face or a heel at any time. And, and the mullet equals win. You, you, you know the mullet and the plaid equals win. So you got to give love to Mackay. You got to give love to – I know some people say James McKay, uh, you know, but Billings pronounces it Mackay, and then I as diehard pronounce it McKay to be an asshole. But, um, but yeah, so – uh, awesome fish, uh, Nick, NFX, all the same person. But uh, I love you, and I I'm so glad that you were in TPP. And I think this year you have been one. And and it, like you said before, you just recently got into it. But you so far this year you've been one of the most impressive to me by a long shot. Just the fact that you came in, you know, grabbed it by the horns, and and you're just rolling with it, and you're giving creative ideas, and you're just you're just going and rolling. And I, I love it. So that's my answer. All right, so who's next? Yes, that would be me. <laughs> okay. Uh, one, one, a guy that came into our league not too long. Really uh -oh. necessarily call him a rookie. I'm pretty sure his name come, <laughs> comes to mind a couple of people. But uh, he, he came into power wrestling not too long ago uh, under his moniker Shingo. And when I mean this dude is a monster, he, he really performs. The, the guy knows his way around the ring. He has spots like crazy. I mean, he, he knows how to work a match. And he, he, he's humble enough to, you know, do uh, certain things that you ask him to do in the ring. He's not a, a selfish person. Very, very conscious about, you know, matches. It, it's really really cool to work with him and really glad he came to us and uh hopefully we make some great matches in the future okay all right so fifth animal your your most impressive uh or the question is let me go back to it uh which new car wrestler most impressed you this year or impressed you the most mm -hmm. Um, is there a limit? Is there any kind of... Only one. Only one. Only one? Uh, can I get a confinement somewhere to choose from? Uh, just in your opinion, like, who you think, um, to you, was the most, uh, who impressed you the most this year? It can be, uh, somebody in power wrestling, uh, PWR, but they have to be new. It can't be, uh, you know, somebody that's been known you know, with, you know, mm -hmm. that same, that same name, it's, I guess is how we're going to say it. It's hard that. for me because a lot of new people I come in contact with, they, they lack and a lot, actually, you know what? It just came to mind. Um, it's a female, it's a female and her, her tag is they love Nessa and yes, yes she yes. has a lot, she has a lot going on when it comes, she, she has a good future when it comes to this core community and, and just being a big aspect 
to leave. Um, our recruiter manager recruited her, and me and Afro, we're very, you know, when, iffy when it comes to females and, and, and wrestling because, you know, they, they tend to get emotional and stuff like that. But this girl, she joined Power Wrestling, and her character, Akira Love, you know, she did everything that we asked her to, and she basically got in and started, unlike other people. You know, a lot of people, they cause problems, and they get real sentimental and all stuff but you know she came in she 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 did her application she did her tryout matches she did everything she was supposed to do you know opposed to other males who who just can't follow directions she followed everything she was supposed to do and right now she's on she's scheduled to be at our pay-per-view you know this is a, this in a short period she she's going to be at our pay-per-view this sunday fighting for the women's championship because she's earned it. You know, storylines have pushed her in the right direction and she's been a big asset when it comes to the female division, you know, as a superstar and as a member because she she caught on. She basically came in, did what she had to do to push herself. And that's what we do ask people as far as like, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're new to any league, you just want to follow direction. You don't want to sit there and, and give lip and, and think that you got to be Mr. Big Bad. You know, everything is set up in a league to to help help the show get better. And you don't want to come in and be selfish because then you're just going to fall behind when the show moves on without you. So she saw everything that we had going on and she listened and followed directions. And I respect her as a young woman. And, you know, she's new to the whole core community, too. And like I said, from as a female, she... She did a lot better than any other guys that I've came in contact with on on the game, and she she knows how to play sim too. She 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 performs very well, you know. So, um, she she's the only person that come to mind to be honest with you. Okay. All right, and then uh, so now we're gonna switch over to. Uh, did we get dark sides? Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. All right, go ahead, dark side. Um. You know, I don't have to say Cinnabis. Okay. Just because literally the way the character came out at first is pretty interesting. And the way he wants to keep going, he wants to make his character like have a darker, darker, keep going with a darker gimmick every time. Which is pretty interesting because I want to see how he keeps doing that. And um, just like the other reasons I said about why he's one of my favorite people to face. Okay. All right. Fair enough. So look at that, Cinnabis. You're getting some shout-outs tonight, son. All right. So McNabb, who has been your most impressive uh, – who has impressed you most as a new wrestler this year? Um, does anyone want to take any bets before I say this? <laughs> no, it's, it's you and then it's Barry Stevens. Like I said, we, we all want to have our answers forgotten by – the awesomeness of Stevens tonight. So, uh, oh jeez, I, I, I will have to go by my uh, previous person that I said earlier, which is uh, Mr. McKay. Okay. Any sp any particular reason, or do you just like brown nosing up to die hard? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was kidding. Well, I was kidding. <coughs> well, I explained earlier. You know, like me and him have done good matches and all that stuff, and you know he's got uh, that. You know, you, you hear me, and I don't have that broad of a Scottish accent. Well, he has, like, that ultimate Scottish accent, which is good for promos and all that stuff. But, uh, like, man, he, he's good at rendering and all that stuff, and it's fun to play with him on WWE. Okay. All right. Fair enough. So, look at that. Even even our boy Makai is getting that love tonight. All right. So, final question. Now, this is how we're going to do this question, because I don't know if somebody actually asked this or if it came through as, like, the question of the day. But um, do you like pie? Okay, so this is how we're going to do this. We're going to respond if we like pie, and then we're going to respond what kind of pie. And we'll go from there. So do I like pie? Yes. And I love pumpkin pie. And McNabb can go next. I, I like pie. I love cherry pie. Okay. All right, Afro. Yes, sir. Do you like pie? <laughs> oh, do I? <laughs> okay. What kind of What kind of pie do you like? I'll keep it PG. I like a good slice of pecan pie. Oh, jeez. Okay. 
I'm from <laughs> Texas, so that's, that's a tradition down here. All right, then, uh, and then fifth? I'm not too big when it comes to pies or cakes. Question that. Yeah, I, I tend to not eat that stuff for every Thanksgiving. I, I do wind up eating it because, you know, I go to my grandparents' house and they have Thanksgiving dinner and they always have pumpkin pie. And you know, although I don't usually eat pie and cakes or anything, I'm the only one who'll tear up a whole pumpkin pie by myself. But that'll be the only time I'll eat it, which would be on Thanksgiving. Okay. All right. Fair enough. All right. So, Mr. Stevens, do you like pie? I am a fan of Reese's Cups pie. It's I've only heard of this pie once. Never had it, but it looks amazing. Sadly, I do not like any other pie. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, all and, right. Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Might I interject for a moment? Uh, to answer the previous question, because <laughs> uh, ski. Ski the tad, no worries. But um, so, well, oh God, the question now. The question was the most impre- uh, the most impressive out of this year, right? Yes. All right. Um, so I would have to say that the most impressive to me was Alex J. Eric, definitely. Okay. Be- because he was he came in, you know, with a face without a name. Had a gamer gimmick, you know that was that was all fine, dandy. And then he just, and then he became, then he became, you know, a leader, a person that uh, that people, you know, were starting to respect and things like that. And then got his got a got a position of high authority, you know. And I think I think it speaks a lot to his character that he was able to transform this quickly within within a federation, the way that he did. I would agree, and and I would I would have said Alex J. Eric, but I had to say Makai. I had to give my boy <laughs> some love. I was gonna say Alex J. Eric, but and, and I love you, I love you, Eric. But I had to give some love to Makai. You know, I had to give him some love because I know a lot of people kind of blew up my Ask FM during the podcast we did during Network Collision. They really thought I didn't like Makai. I love the guy, and uh, so yeah. Um, I guess at this point in time, we're, we're pretty much winding down. It's looping back to the Iron Man, as you saw, John Cena, Super Cena beat The Rock. But uh, So we're going to do a little bit of shameless promotion here so you can plug your your fed that you're in, your leagues that you're in or that you're interested in or you know whatever, things like that. Um, and I guess I'll start it here because uh, this weekend we have – like this week has just been really crazy for me. I haven't even been on my Xbox that much, but um, – we had the podcast tonight, and then tomorrow night we got the Frontline stream. And then on Saturday night at 8 p.m., uh, we have TPP Endgames, our final event of WWE 13. But then we also have our pre-show podcast with the TPP guys uh, at 6.30 Eastern, which, ironically, uh, CCE's uh, CPV event, Ascension, will be live at, I think, 6. So, I don't know, there's a lot of stuff going on this weekend for a lot of leagues and feds. And uh, so my shameless promotion, of course, is you're watching the live stream. Why don't you just go subscribe to the Frontline channel and, you know, watch watch, watch Frontline. All that good stuff. You want to do any shameless promotion, McNabb? Or? Watch TBP. That's all I can say. <laughs> and many other promotions that TBP is this associated with. Demon. All right. And then uh, Darkseid, what do you got for us? Uh, literally, I'm in nothing. You'll get in something. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe the PowerPoint. Yeah, I don't Ooh. know. I mean, he, keep, you, he keeps walking into... He keeps saying he walks into the locker room, and every time he walks into the locker room, he tries this 360 NS stuff, and he gets kicked in the face. Well, I'm, um, try, I'm trying to talk it, to somebody, but you know, fucking this, this old-ass man is in my way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look at that. Even, even staying in character on that one, calling me an old man. Oh. Look at that. Okay, All man. right. All right, Afro, do you want to go first, or do you want uh, you want Fifth to go first? Uh, animal, you wanna you wanna? No, he said Afro go. <laughs> uh, well, that's what I was saying. This Sunday we have uh, 15 minutes of fame. This time of year, second season, uh, Power Rumble. Uh, 
Got some great matches, hopefully lined up. Uh, be on the lookout for that Akira, like we said. Very good female you know, uh, athlete. Very good in the ring. Oh, I said athlete. Anyway, uh, <laughs> good ring skills. It, it's going to be a lot of cliffhangers. Watch okay. if you're a fan of power wrestling. Watch. If you're not, you want to be, watch it. Anyway. Good stuff. All right. And then, uh, so fifth animal. What you got for us, brother? Um. Uh, oh yeah, we're doing the shameless. All right. Um. Yeah. This, like Afro said, this weekend. I mean, this Sunday only. Uh, we have the 15 minutes of fame or, uh, pay per view. Um, it's gonna feature basically the closeout, not closeout completely of storylines, but a lot of storylines are going into its climax because. Um, like I said, we've been watching everybody else and we've been picking up different things, learning different things. And, you know, anybody that watch our videos from the past to forward or recent to latest, they can see growth in, in, our, in our shows. And um, 15 Minutes of Fame, it sets that standard for us as a league moving into 2K14 just to show exactly what we're capable of. So I, I would welcome everybody to watch it. Uh, on YouTube channel Admin Animal, 15 minutes of fame pay per view will be this Sunday, and um, uh, you go you all can check out you know something new, something different that we're trying to bring to the table in the core community. Um, also, um, I, I do want to answer a question. One of somebody sent the Ask FM question to me. Um, the question was after Power Wrestling take a break when the new games come out, will the core still be getting paid? And I just want to touch a little bit on that because, you know, some people may think that it's actual money. That um, Power Wrestling, we, we, we're unique in a way that we're trying to set up two different things, which is one, the show, and then two, the career. Members actually put their superstars through careers. And from the show aspect, you have those who develop the show to make it look good. So we actually have a feature called superstars contracts everybody has a certain contract and stuff like that so during that period that we take out our, our hiatus i want you all to know that because we're set on this high standard amongst the core community there will be no contracts for superstars until you've earned it and the way you earn it is going through evaluations and your evaluations will depend on your mic skills your ring skills and your creativity three things that you have to have as far as being a superstar in any league. Okay. All right. And then Barry Stevens, you want to give a shameless plug for uh, some places you associate with? Sure, sure. So I would definitely want to plug uh, PWR once it comes back. I'm sure we've got a lot of interesting things in store for that promotion, I'm sure. And I'd also like to uh, take notice of Kapow, which is which is uh, going to be coming out soon in the editing phase right now. should be very, very interesting indeed. And and that's, yeah, well, besides True Pro and uh, seeing, seeing what they're doing with that, uh, that's pretty much it for me. <laughs> okay. Exactly. And Kapow, you know, it's like, bam! I, you know, I, I, uh, we're actually we're going to work out a promotional spot on Frontline for Kapow as well. So that's... That's community connecting, which leads me into the final last little bit. For those of you that would be interested in being on the podcast with me or with other guests, it is an open forum. There, there isn't like a set order, except for next week. It is already set in stone who it's going to be. And I'm just going to say one name now, and that's AC Arthurs. I will not say the other name yet. Um, because we may add a third person, but that will be it. It'll, it'll be myself, Arthur's, and one other person. So next week, that is uh, you know the Wednesday after 14 comes out. Dun dun dun. But uh, but yeah, anything after that, if you guys want to get on here, you know, just uh, like I, like I was saying earlier, just um, you know, get at me on uh, on Skype or Xbox or Twitter or YouTube, pretty much wherever. You know, I'm pretty easy to get a hold of and. My my ultimate goal with this is is to show that everybody can work together. You know, just just got to be willing to communicate. And uh, again, thanks for you know thanks for joining us tonight. And and thank you to uh, Dark Side Kicker. I, I do apologize for last week though, but I, you know, 
Comcast would have been messing with me, we would have gotten it. But uh, <laughs> thank you for joining us tonight. And then, of course, thank you to Barry Stevens, who uh, totally made Billings just look like a chump. Like <laughs> the voice of an angel right here oh, on, on please. the podcast. Pleasure I'm just was saying, all voice mine. of an angel. <laughs> Pleasure voice was all mine. An thank you. <laughs> thank you. But, uh, but, yeah, guys, so thank you again for, for joining us, and we will see you guys uh, next week and all that good stuff. So, so thanks, and see ya. Bye.